space keeps running, running, and running, running, and running, running, and running, running, and running, running. And running, running, and running, running. Now I'm going to step you up to, to the actual control of the HVAC system. This is basic control, and this is, but this is what you, most people will have in their house. This is, this is a full control system for an HVAC system. Um, does anybody remember what this type of a schematic is called in my class? Sean, you know what that is. What kind of schematic is that? It's a wiring diagram, but what's the, what would we name that? Okay, this is the most common wiring diagram that we use in the HVAC world, and it's called a ladder diagram. Everything flows from the beginning down, and it shows all the components in, in the order that they are connected, okay? So what we do here is let's just take those let's just take three resistors or three lights and we're going to call the first one a fan we're going to call the second one the condenser and we're going to call the third one the heat and let's just say we have electric heat in this case so to turn these on does anybody know how to close these contacts in a in a uh, heating and air world thermostat, thermostat. And what would it take to turn the fan on, for example, with this thermostat? Um, fan. You'd have to turn on the cooling system. Yeah. Yeah. Turn the fan switch on. Yeah. Okay. This, in a, in, a, in a wiring diagram, you are going to see a, a diagram just like this. Everything in this hashed line right here represents the components inside the thermostat. Okay. If these are the components inside the thermostat, that's all low voltage. And how do you get the low voltage? Yes, sir? Yeah, um, if 120 volt, 120 volts comes through the um, one side of the transformer and goes through the other side, and goes in 24 volts. Okay. And here, here's, here's the drawing for the transformer, okay? What's another name for the high voltage side of the transformer? Anybody? The primary side. So we're going to take 120 volts. Just picture this coming all the way from the circuit breaker panel. We're going to take 120 volts from L1 and neutral, and we're going to run it through a switch to, turn it, to make sure that the power is either on or off for this whole circuit. And we, when we run it through that switch, we're going to bring hot down to one side of the primary transformer and we're going to bring neutral to the other side of the primary transformer. That is going to power the transformer and on the secondary side of the transformer it's going to step the voltage down to 24 volts AC. Okay, So we're not using DC voltage at all. This is 24 volt AC. And the reason that we do that mainly is for safety, but it's also a cheap way to run your wires to all the different components as well. You can run that wire inside the walls and not worry about putting it in conduit um, because 24 volts is a safe voltage. And so when we, when we step that down to 24 volts, let's just, let's just bring that fan on. If this is the secondary side of the transformer, and this is our hot side, we call that R. And so I'm going to use a red, red ink. And R is going to sit inside the thermostat in these, place, in these positions. And it's just waiting for a place to go. <clears throat> we, also, we also have to have common. Just like we have to have neutral in a high, in a high voltage world, we also have to have common. So common is going to sit on one side of all the coils of the components called relays and contactors that are going to actually turn these on. <clears throat> so these coils right here are actually in the same position as these contacts. When we power up one of these coils at the bottom of this contactor, it will close 
just like turning a light switch on, it's going to close contacts and make those and make whatever power you set on one side of this contactor come out the other side. So right now, we have 110 volts sitting on one side of three relays. And so in this example, we'd have 110 volts sitting right here. It's not going to go anywhere until we power the coil with 24 volts and it pulls a solenoid down and it closes those contacts across each other and that voltage goes out, okay? Does anybody have any questions about that? This is really important that you understand that. This coil down here on the low voltage side is represented by these three coils and there's three relays. The contacts up here are represented by these open switches. Okay, everybody get that? All right. We want to turn the fan on. Let's just say this is the contactor that is, that is going to turn the fan on. If we turn the thermostat, when you all go home tonight, you can go look at your thermostats and you're going to have a fan on an auto switch. Right now, this is showing that it's in the auto position. We need to power this coil to turn that fan on. And so we're going to turn that switch up and bring that 24 volt hot voltage out to back into the house to the furnace and power up this coil. We've got common on one side just sitting there, but the other side is just waiting for that hot load, okay, or that hot signal. When this gets powered up, the contacts are going to close right here and it's going to turn that fan on. Anybody have any questions? When that contact closes, we're going to take that 110 volts or 120 volts out to the, to the fan motor itself. Simple? Just like all this is doing, that thermostat is the same thing as you walking into a room and turning the light switch on and, and bringing power to the components. But we're going to do it automatically with the thermostat and we're going to do it safely with 24 volts, okay? Um, let's just go ahead and turn the air conditioning on now. Can some, one of my guys, can you walk us through turning the air conditioning on with that thermostat? Anybody? Brian, you probably can, can't you? Uh, <laughs> huh? to, okay. to turn on the air conditioning? Yeah, to turn the, turn the AC on. What what positions do we want our we want our cool off heat switch put on what position? We want the switch put on cool just like it's showing right here. That is going to bring power all the way to an internal thermistor inside that thermostat. And that thermostat is just going to wait for the the temperature in the space to get too warm, right? As soon as the temperature in the space gets too warm, that's going to close and go out. What terminal in the thermostat is going to start your condenser outside and, and, and therefore start your compressor? Why? Good for you. So there's a terminal inside the thermostat that has Y on it. And when, when the thermostat wants cooling to start, it is going to it is going to send that 24 volt signal all the way outside on a low voltage wire and it is going to pull that contactor in, boom. And when it comes in, an, a typical uh, compressor or condenser will have 208 to 220 volts on it. When this closes, it's going to take that 110 and 110 volt L1 and L2 signal and it's going to, and it's going to power up the compressor and the condenser fan motor. Okay, so what else has to start when we, when we want to cool our house? The indoor fan motor, right, and that would be in the furnace or sometimes we call it an air handling unit. And how, how does this 24 volt power get to the fan motor relay? Good, good. And if you have your thermostat switch in the auto position, that is automatically going to follow that out terminal G. 
And terminal G is what starts that indoor fan motor, okay, all the time. And when, it, and when it goes back into the furnace, it pulls in a little relay, and the relay closes just like, every, just like the condenser did. This was called a contactor because the contacts are bigger, but a relay can have smaller contacts because that fan motor is not going to draw a lot of amperage. And when G hits that coil, it's going to suck it closed, okay? When G hits that coil, it's going to suck it closed. It's going to, it's going to close C1, and when we sent power out Y, we close C2. This power over here went out to the condenser. This power over here went to the fan, okay? Does everybody understand that? I don't want anybody to be confused about this, okay? Any questions at all? All right. Yes, sir. Okay. Wait, are we going to go over heat? We, we can, but you ask your question first. Okay. Well, it's, um, whenever you have it on heat, the, the indoor fan motor needs to be running too, right? Right. Whenever you have it on heat, that's, that's a good point. In the real world, we are going to have an auxiliary contact and that auxiliary contact is going to be run in parallel with C1, okay? And we're going to call that the, the fan switch. And this, and when we call for heat, let's, let's do that, Stephen, let's call for heat. We've got the 24 volt R, and it is sitting right here and right here. Our fan switch is left in auto. This is the normal position, left in auto. But when we call for heat, we're gonna put this switch down into the heat position, and all of you have this on your thermostat, so when you go home, I want you to, to look at it, check it out. When we put that in heat, that 24 volt signal, if it's cold, the thermistor inside that thermostat is going to close just like it shows right here and it is going to come out to a relay inside the furnace, a, a second relay inside the furnace and we normally, call, if it's electric heat, we'll normally cause that, call that relay a sequencer. When we power the coil of that sequencer, it's going to close and, it, and if it's electric heat, it is going to bring 208 to 220 volts to electric heat strips and light them up. Okay, when that happens, we have to have that fan running in the house, right? If that's the case, how does that fan start? All right, Stephen, this is going to answer your question. In the new world order, we'll have, we'll have circuit boards like this, and in a lot of cases, there's going to be a timer on there. When we call for heat and we send signal on W, to, to start the heat, we are actually going to light up the coils, right, the heat strips. We're going to light them up, but in the new world order, there might be a time delay on here in a, in a short period of time that that furnace is going to get hot enough and it's, gonna, it's going to close an auxiliary contact and power the fan up with power from a different input to the fan motor and generally we run the fan about half speed in the heating in the winter time because it will carry a lot more BTUs of heat that way. If we run it too fast it's, it's not going to feel near as warm. So why do you think that, it, it, that we delay that, that fan? Yes sir? Exactly, exactly. Does everybody understand that? Can you imagine if, if we call for heat in a, in a zero degree day and that fan starts up, how cold that air is going to be? So this is, just a, this is just a courtesy time delay to start that heat up. In almost all the old furnaces, this is actually going to be like a thermistor sitting in that, in that uh, section that is getting hot. When the burners come on, let's just say, or the coils 
or the coils come on and start heating that, that hot, the heat section up in a furnace, it is going to actually take 120 volts right to one side, just like that, and it's automatically going to sense the temperature as it gets warm in there. It's going to close that contact on its own. And when it closes that contact, it's going to go to the fan motor on a, on a uh, different coil or a different winding, and it's going to start that fan motor on its own. So you won't have anything like this. It'll actually just be sensing the temperature inside there. And so anyway, with that kind of, that, that was a great question, Stephen. With that kind of a time delay, when it starts blowing, it's going to be warm air right off the bat. So people don't just get frozen that's sitting under a vent, okay? Great question. All right. Does anybody, everybody understand? Nobody has any questions? Let's just run the air conditioning one more time. When we run air, we want the condenser to come on outside that starts the compressor and it removes heat from the, from the system that's been picked up in the space. And we also want that fan to come on in your house to blow that cold air across there. And so, we're going to have 24 volts. It's going to sit there and it's going to sit there. We just go ahead and leave our thermostat in the auto position. As soon as it gets warm, warmer than what your thermostat is set on, that signal is going to come across that thermistor and go out Y. And when we send that 24 volt signal out Y, it pulls into contactor outdoors and it starts that unit, okay, the condenser. When it does, we also send that 24 volt signal through auto and out G, and it goes into the house, into the furnace, and pulls in a relay that starts the indoor fan motor on high speed. That's as simple as it is. When we sent the signal on Y, we closed this contact, started the condenser, and when, when it went out and hit the coil on G, we closed that contact, and that's as simple as it is. This is a perfect example of a wall unit would look, a 110 volt air conditioner that somebody would have in a wall. It's 110 volts and it works just like that, okay? All right. No questions? Um, what's G, Y, and W? What is that? Okay, G is the terminal inside a thermostat that sends 24 volts out to start the indoor fan motor, yeah. which is right here. Y is, is the output of the thermostat and that will go start the condenser and the compressor, okay? And of course the compressor is the heartbeat of the whole operation. That's, that starts the whole cooling cycle. And W is what starts heat. So let's start heat one more time. That's a great question. Let's start heat one more time. <clears throat> We're gonna have this 24 volts sitting on that switch right there. We call for heat. We put our switch in heat because it's winter time. And you'll probably find that in the newer thermostats, it could automatically switch over to heat. Um, and in the older ones, you'll actually have a setting. Here's fan on and auto. And here's off, cool, and heat. So when we put that thermostat in heat and we want it to, and we want it to warm up, we're gonna call, we're gonna set our set point higher than the room temperature. And when we do, that power is going to go out W, and when it goes out W, we're going to pull in another relay that's inside the furnace again, and it's going to start the heat, whether it's gas or whether it's electric. It's going to, it's going to start the heat process. And when it does, when it hits W, we start the heat like that by closing this contact, and then one more time, when it gets warm enough inside or when, it, when it's been on long enough on a modern, modern circuit board, it's gonna close that contact automatically and start the fan on a lower speed. So if a, if a high speed is, is, let's just say, 1250 RPM, when we start the fan for winter, it might be 650 RPM. So it, it's just about half the, half the speed in the winter time. All right? All right, cool. 
Warm. All right. All right. This, this seems kind of complicated to a lot of you, maybe, but I'm going to try and make it real clear. This is a great drawing I found. This drawing is of a relay. This is, this is the same relay, looking at it from the side. But what we do with that 24 volts, and the thermostat is in complete control of that 24 volts, right? We feed it with R and common. And then when, we, when the thermostat wants to call something in, it sends that 24 volt signal out on one of those lines. Let's just say that this is the indoor fan motor. And we are going to send, and we want the indoor fan motor to come on. If you'll notice, A and B, I put it right down here, A and B is normally open contacts, and here's where they're open right there, okay? Everybody see that? So if we set power on A, whatever, whatever power we need to start a motor or start a gas valve or start the, uh, the electric heat strips. Let's just say that it's electric heat strips and they're sitting out there. We've got <coughs> L2 and we're waiting for L1. That's 110 volts and we've got L2 sitting on the other side 110 volts, but these aren't gonna heat up until they get 220 volts. We are waiting for that power to get out here, and the only way it's gonna happen is to close those contacts. Once again, we're gonna close those contacts with a safe 24 volts. Let's just use a different color for this. Um, I think we can take 24 volts on G, put G, because the thermostat wants that fan to come on. We're going to take 34 volts out on G, and we are going to power up that relay because we're going to have 24 volt common sitting on the other side. Okay? So here is C and D is the coil. And when that coil gets energized with 24 volts, it is going to suck this down. It is going to going to create an electromotive force that is going to close those contacts. When those contacts go close, it's going to take that, that power that was just sitting there waiting for a party and it's going to send it out and it's going to start the heat, all right? Or start the fan. Whatever you're using the, the relays for. And this is the same relay and this is just an example. C and D right there are C and D right there. If this is if this is the common and this is the 24 volts, let's just say that we're, once again, let's just say we're going to start the fan. So we're going to send the 24 volts on G, okay, from the thermostat. When that coil gets energized, it's going to suck that solenoid down and take whatever power we had sitting right here, and it's going to send it through to the fan motor. Got it? That kind of, this is a great drawing, isn't it? That makes relays seem a lot more simple. All right, any questions about that at all? All right, well, let's take a break, and uh, when we come back, we'll go out to the, sh to the lab, and we'll actually show you how this works on the components themselves.